Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Mark Roden. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going over my top 10 Euro sports cars. Um, last video I did my top 10 JDM sports cars. So if you haven't seen that one, check the description down below. And yeah, let's get into it. So I got two little disclaimers for you guys. Um, one, all my videos are personal opinions. So if you disagree with something, don't get offended. Just tell me in the comments below what your favorite Euro car is, if it doesn't make the list, and tell me why. I like to hear, I, I love to hear other people's opinions and it's really nice. Uh, it's really nice to talk to other car people about things that I never knew about. So it's a great thing. Another thing is these are typically only sports cars. These aren't, I'm not going into the supercar territory because if I was, I could talk about Lamborghinis, Ferraris, Aston Martin, McLaren, all those are technically Euro cars. Uh, so we're not gonna do that because it would have been way too hard to pick just 10 and the supercars are gonna be for a different video. So today is, it's specifically just European sports. All right, so with that out of the way, let's get into the list. Uh, number 10 is the Volkswagen Jetta GLI Mark VI. The Mark VI GLI is a four-door sports car pushing around 200 horsepower and 207 foot-pounds of torque, all in a two-liter inline-four turbocharged engine. Uh, these cars are front-wheel drive, which is, you know, you can take it how you want. You either like front-wheel drive or you don't like front-wheel drive. But you say what you want about these cars. The reason why I love them is because they look like little sedans. You know, they're just they're sports sedans. There's nothing really special about them until you start modifying them and then they could become like a fully built race car. You can slam it to the ground. You can do whatever you want to these cars and they look really good doing it. And if you don't want to modify it, that's fine. It's a great fuel uh, gas mileage car. It does what it wants to do best, which is be a good economy car. They're, they're amazing cars and they, look, they just look so good when done. Uh, number nine is the Renault Renault. I don't I don't know how to pronounce that. I think it's Renault Renault Clio V6 uh, This is the only car on the list that isn't German. So that's pretty interesting this mid-engine Also only car on the list that's mid-engine rear-wheel drive French sports hatch Produces 251 horsepower and 221 foot-pounds of torque in a 3 liter V6 These cars were and they still are legendary. You never see them modded though which kind of sucks. I mean, you, they're modified, but for the race track or the rally course, um, not really popular in the car show scene. And that's because it's so expensive. And when they get their hands on them, the people that want to buy them are typically buying them for what they do best, which is rally and racing. And they don't they don't like to destroy it pretty much, which it makes sense. All right, so number eight is the first of many BMWs, the BMW M3 E92. The first BMW on this list, it came with a four liter V8 producing 414 horsepower and honestly a pretty significant drop off with torque only being at 295 foot pounds. Uh, the car was rear wheel drive, which definitely helps it get sideways and you, I'll, I'll put a clip here of one of them, one of these doing a drift. Somebody is calling my phone right now and it is not helping the video. Okay, it's all done. The car is <laughs> drive, which definitely helps to get sideways. Uh, if you have the money, this is definitely the M3 to take. Uh, another great fact about this M3, and M3s in general actually, not even just this one, is they have an unbelievably huge aftermarket support for them, so you can build it however you want. If it's a drift, if it's track, if it's show, you can do whatever you want to them, and they, they get it all done perfectly. All right, number seven is the second BMW, the BMW M3 E46. Uh, this is the second BMW in a row, <laughs> and there's a reason for it. Compared to the E92, this car is pretty underpowered. It comes in with 346 horsepower and 269 foot-pounds of torque in a 3.2 liter inline six. Um, that's actually a really decent amount, though, considering this car came out in 1998. Once again, these cars love to get sideways. If you have, if you have the money, you can bring an M3 E46 to the drift track, but if you don't, 
just don't buy the M3. <laughs> just buy the base model version and build it. Um, they also have an unbelievable aftermarket support and cult following. All the M3s do. So you'll never run out of fun stuff to do to this car. I mean, you could do, I see them done with wide body kits. I see them done clean. I've seen them all over the place at the drift tracks and race tracks. Once again, they're all over the place. They're a great car and a great starter car too. Okay, number six is actually the only Mercedes on this list. And it is the 2012 Mercedes-Benz C63 AMG. I'm not talking about the black series because it's a good, decent amount more than the base model, but if you want to pay the extra cheddar, go for it. Uh, the 2012 model came with a huge 6.2 liter V8 producing 510 horsepower and 457 foot-pounds of torque. I actually think that is the most for any car on this list. It's it's a, it's a beast of a car. Um, it's also the most expensive though, so keep that in mind. These cars look so slick, like they just look so good, and they have the perfect balance to me of like a normal sedan that you see on the road, but also it looks like a sports car that you see on the racetrack. It, it's perfectly done. I think it looks just so good. And once again, just like every other car on this list, they can be used for pretty much anything. You don't see them a lot drifted and tracked and all that stuff because they're so expensive, but they can do it if you want to. If you have the money, you can do it. All right, number five. We are halfway through the list, boys. The Volkswagen Golf GTI Mark IV. This is literally every high schooler's first tuner car, and there's a big reason for that. They're dirt cheap, they have decent power, but they can produce a lot of power. And, and this is the best part here, it is so easy to make this car pop and bang and shoot some flames. Who doesn't like to pull up to your high school on prom night shooting flames? Come on now. The Mark IV came with an inline four turbocharged 20 valve engine which produced 178 horsepower, 173 foot-pounds of torque in a front-wheel drive platform. Um, one thing that I love most about this car, and if it didn't have this, I don't even know if I would like it as much as I do, but it's the loud factor of it. Like I just said, these cars are just, they're just, they're like little machine guns. They're just all day. It's awesome. I'll put a clip in here right now. So number four on this list is the predecessor to the Mark IV GTI, the Mark III GTI. The Mark III came with a two liter engine producing, oh, two liter inline four, sorry, producing only 113 horsepower and 122 foot pounds of torque. Uh, if you're thinking about buying one of these, know why you're buying it. Um, you, hopefully you're not a speed junkie. If you love the feeling of going fast, probably not the best car for you to buy but if you do like that feeling of riding low and smooth and going to car shows and showing off your wheels and your suspension the mark 3 gti is honestly probably perfect for you they're so fun because of their little it's almost like the european miata you know they're just fun little cars they can get around corners really fast and they look so good doing it they look amazing i mean the the aftermarket support for these cars are amazing as well, but the looks of them, you're gonna get a lot of looks. All right, third place on this list, bronze medal, goes to the third BMW of the list, the BMW M3 E30. This is the actual first ever M3 to come out, is the E30, and it came with a 2.3 liter inline four producing 217 horsepower and 180 foot-pounds of torque. I'm pretty sure this car came out in 1988, don't quote me on that, but I think that's the year it came out. And if that's true, think about how this car was producing 217 horsepower back in 1988, and the Subaru BRZs today aren't even producing that much. Like these cars were ahead of their time, and there's a reason why the M series of, uh, of BMW does so well, because they're such beasts of cars. Just, you can. They're also bulletproof. You can take them anywhere. Not really. You can't take them anywhere, but you can uh, do what you want to them. Uh, one thing I found out about when I started making this video is the M3s have a pretty large drop-off when it comes for, to horsepower to foot-pounds of torque. I never knew that, but 
So the fun little fact. Just keep that in mind, I guess. All right, so second place on this list goes to the fourth and final BMW, the BMW M3 E36. Um, yeah, that's right. I'm a big M I'm big M3 fan. I'm sorry, but uh, this is a second gen M3, and it looks amazing. That's pretty much the deciding factor on this car to me is the sheer looks of it. I love when a car stock looks boring, when it looks like a sedan, when it looks like your grandma would drive it. But then when you start doing things to it, it can be a missile. And that's exactly what the M3s are. Um, not really the M3s, but the um, like M series of them. This car is pushing 282 horsepower and 236 foot pounds of torque, all crammed into a three liter inline six. These cars are the drift gods. You will not go to a drift course and not see an E36. I promise you. Another great fact about these cars is that if you don't get the M3 version and you're just getting the base model version, they're really cheap. You can find one for four or five thousand dollars with around a hundred thousand miles. They're really good cars, so just keep that in mind if you're looking for a first car. All right, gold medal. First place has to be the Audi S4 B5. Listen, people, I don't know, okay? I don't know. I did. I said this last video, and I'm still gonna say it again. I have a very weird mindset when it comes to the cars I like, but the Audi S4 B5 to me looks amazing. Like I said with the E36, one of my favorite things in cars is when they are so under-assuming. You look at it, you think it's not gonna produce anything, then you get under the hood, and that car is a beast. This S4 came with 261 horsepower and 295 foot-pounds of torque in a 3 liter V6 engine. BMW can learn something from Audi when it comes to torque. They have, this car has 34 more foot pounds of torque than horsepower. What is BMW doing? I don't know. You can do pretty much anything to these cars, once again, and they're, ama they're, just, they're just amazing. I love the looks of them. I'll show you guys some uh, videos of them looking clean, obviously, but also they're really good at burnouts. and. Who doesn't like to do some burnouts? Is there anybody here that doesn't like to do burnouts? If you're here watching this video and you don't like to do burnouts, why are you watching this video? All right, guys. So that's that's the end of this video. If you suck to the end, I really appreciate that. It means the world to me. Um, please like, subscribe, and comment down below what your favorite Euro car is. That would I really want to talk to some people about their favorite cars and definitely check out the um, last video on the. Um, JDM cars. Next video is most likely going to be top 10 modern JDM cars because I like modern cars. It might be luxury sports though, so we'll see. Uh, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, like what I'm doing right now, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single video because this is what we're producing all day, all day, every day, boys. Um, that's pretty much it, guys. If you, I really appreciate everything you guys have done, done for me with Smooth Stance and now with YouTube. It means a lot, so. If you've made it this far, comment frog. Frog, comment it down below. Peace out, guys. Have a good day.